Peter, Peter, what, what do we have here? What do we have here? This is a piece of Perspex, which is excellent. Safety. It's a cable. Yeah, but like, what, what, is, what is it? It's a rig. What does a rig do? It represents a dyno and a customer's uh, electric power test dyno. Yeah, so it is a dyno. Absolutely. We got a torque sensor. Yeah. We got spinning. We can, we can spin yeah, it in both directions. Noise. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Which torque sensor have we got in there? That's the the T two ten. That's a new one. Mm. It's a good one. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, why is that the, better than the? Uh, it's got the frequency ones? output. I think we make the electronics now, so it's all proprietary. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Klaus! What can you do with this rig? Klaus, what can we do with the rig? Klaus, you're in video now. Uh, put uh, coffee on it. That's you can favorite. pour coffee on it? <laughs> <laughs> Not to be recommended. Not to be recommended. I've only tried that twice. Yeah. But we can, can we, can we do a, can we, rep, you know, do, do a customer representation so of what a customer tries to do? Can we represent that on this rig? Well, yeah. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, we can run. Let's do it. Well, we just did an efficiency map. Oh. Okay. You want to see it? Yeah, I want to see some cock talking or something. You want to? Don't worry, I got another meeting, but no yeah. Worry, yeah. Well, this is more important yeah, than anyhow. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so how, do, how, do we, how, do we, how do we show, show cog whip on here then? Talk well, well this, this, is, uh, this is efficiency mapping. Mm -hmm. So we got, we got the voltages up here and the currents down here. And you can see the amplitude on the current changes when the torque increases. So, so we got more torsional force on it. Okay. And then we change the speed and we can see the, the distance between the peaks get shorter. Because uh, the higher the frequency, the higher the speed. And I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but you can hear the, the spinning getting a higher frequency. So back to back to low torque, higher torque, higher torque, higher torque, and the yes. yeah. And the the rig is sending a a trigger to the to the acquisition unit where we're recording all this data, and then we're every time we trigger we're we're populating the efficiency map. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, so we create our own efficiency maps. Is that using the uh, um, the, uh, the glyph from Encode? No, no, no. This is uh, MATLAB backbone. MATLAB. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it like fills it in live. I, I mean, we we had the speeds really tight, so it gets a little funny. Uh, we're fixing the interpolation. Um, mm -hmm. Evidently, it was a pretty easy fix. We just had to mess around some code. As you do. As you do. As you do. Yeah. I mean, this is a really cool tool yeah. to demo to customers. So how's, how's this going to help the customer? Then? How's this going to help the customer understand what we do and why why they would why why this is a yeah. good purchase for them? Well, I mean, I think it really demonstrates like we've got the the cycle detect feature. Okay. Um, so I mean, the, the, all right, we're gonna we're gonna just go to a fixed speed for a minute. Um, so fixed torque, fixed speed. Maybe we'll zoom out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the cycle detect, it's, it's a pretty unique thing. So like we track the fundamental frequency, which, which is the rotational speed, right? Mm -hmm. So like if we speed this up or slow it down, that black square wave is, is the time period we use for averaging power. Okay. I thought we didn't average power. I thought we just did it on uh, every, every half cycle. Yeah, we average it every half cycle. Okay. So, so we average, uh, the sum of all the points every half cycle. Uh, you know, you take the mean to get power, you take the RMS to get and RMS. this is the half cycle of the fundamental. Yeah, that's the, the like physical representation. So that's actually a cool thing we do too. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause like nobody else gives you the time period. We actually give you the time period for averaging. Okay. Um, and like if I step discreetly through speed, like there's, well, that's probably too slow to even see on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, like there's no settling time, like no. increase speed track, increase speed track, increase speed track. So, oh, good? well, going back to the efficiency map, right? Like, every point, we're just there. Okay. Is so, there a competition doing that, too? Uh, no, because we do it in real time. So we do it in the hardware. Boom, you have results. We stream them out on CAN bus. We can receive triggers from, from the dyno. So the dyno settled, trigger, measured, move to the next point. So move that, to the next so point. that CAN bus is sending stuff to, to an automation system? Yeah, it would be uh, coming back like, to, the next, to the rig. Okay. Yeah, so there's a communication coming from, from well, in this case, the tablet, okay. the automation system. That represents system. the automation system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, we, so what, what we add to the customer, right, <laughs> the original question, <laughs> um, is they can make these efficiency maps way faster. Okay. How uh, much faster? I mean, it depends on how many points you're running, but if, if you look at, like, the cooldown times, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere in the range of, like, you know, you, you could take your one week test and maybe go down to three days. Or you wow. take your two week test and go down to 
to a period of time. Because if you're going to, you know, a tenth of a second versus ten seconds so for 10,000 points. If you say we cut them in two days, that's, that's what, seven, eight thousand uh, dollars? I think in the open market. And that's just the test rate, that's not including the, well, yeah. the technician time. And yeah, if you go to like a test house, I want to say it's something like three grand a day. Wow. Well, that's US. I don't know what that is in funny money. Cool. Yeah. And how much do you charge for one of these? Uh, again, it depends on the uh, the size of the system, but you know you're somewhere in the range of twenty five to fifty k, depending on how much uh, how much channels you need. And is that a lot more expensive than products on the market today? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, you know, we we look that up pretty regularly, and I think we're we're pretty competitive. But we save we save you we save you seven thousand dollars a week. We save you seven thousand dollars a week, and you don't have to buy an oscilloscope. Because we, we record all that data. I mean, like, this is this is good stuff. Like, I think we should sell more. I think we should put the quota up. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we, we're recording the pulses. We're, we're getting down to, like, the individual rise times on the PWM. We, we can look at the current ripple. Um, where's my unzoom button? It's really hard to do this with the computer. Um, so why is that good for a customer, then, to look at the current ripple? Well, yeah, so I mean, looking at the current ripple, it, it, it's the relation between the voltages and the currents, uh, which, which sounds like trivial, but you've got these really sharp rise times on your voltages, at, as as can be seen on the screen here. Um, and then if we, uh, let's see how this turns out. You know, you, you can actually see that current following the switches, and, and this isn't the best example ever because it's crowded. Um, but that, that current ripple gets translated to torque. So if you have that vibration or that, that frequency in your current, that makes its way to frequency in your torque. So, so as a customer, what am I doing with that? Am I going back to my design team and saying, your, your, your unit's too, too, too coggy or too ripply? Well, or? yeah. I mean, you could go back to the motor design team and, and fine tune the model. I mean, a lot of it comes down to the, the winding function. But you could yeah. also go to the control team and change the DQ currents. Okay. You know, a torque ripple cancellation is basically active noise cancellation mm -hmm. uh, in headphones. And like, well, we can show the exact opposite in the rig. Um, so we have a torque rip ripple feature in our cool new rig here. Okay. Where, let's go to torque ripple. Let's throw some speed. A little baseline torque. Like, we can introduce uh, a mechanical ripple, where we can see our current getting mm -hmm. really kind of crazy, and our torque starts having a frequency to it. Oh yeah. Or even better, we can inject a frequency ripple, um, where my currents get real funny, mm. and again, our, our torque goes a little crazy. Um, this is pretty zoomed in. I think if we zoom out, we'll see it a little more dramatic. And uh, yeah, well, let's let's record some data and, and look at it in a static. So like if I if I mess around with the frequency in my current, I can change that torque behavior. Now, in the rig, we've intentionally made it worse. Mm -hmm. um, but in real life, you could do the opposite and make make the situation better. Mm -hmm. So like we, again, we've got our like really smooth current. So the intention is to, to so a customer can actually see how they determine torque ripple on their system. Yeah. Using our yeah. You could understand how the controller that's controlling the currents directly affects the, because you can see the torque's got a frequency to it, the current's got a frequency to it. If I turn that down, the torque or the current is really sinusoidal and the torque is pretty smooth. And if I, you know, if we want to look at something not moving, we can look at the data because we record all that data. Maybe we recorded that data. Maybe we edit this out and do it again. Why is it useful to record that data? Because I mean, you know. Well, yeah, you can always go back to review. You can go back to your design team. Um, you you can start to understand why your machine behaves the way it does, and you know, you alter alter the vibration for noise and vibration for the for the experience aspect. Alter yeah. it for efficiency. And how do you get this data back to the design team? Do you create reports and and, and do you have like well, image snapshots or yeah. send them? Uh... That's something that I think is pretty not regular in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody's got their own special sauce, right? Um, and I, I think that's one of the things that we have in our roadmap is is coming up with tools that make it easier. But some people want data, uh, mm -hmm. some people want an Excel sheet, some people want screenshots. But if, if we can really get to a place where, like, hey, you have this, because I think this is relatively novel, you know, current. So, so is, it, is this something that, that will be in a test specification from a design team to, to look out for, or is this something that just comes up, that, or, or is this, oh, am I being naive and this is just every motor test you're looking for? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, again, it, it's always application based, but um, torque ripple is always going to affect it. In a, in a car, it's going to be noise so and vibration. Like test engine, you're looking at the torque ripple on this. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, here, here's here's some data, and like, all right, we'll auto scale it. So we have, yeah, we have we have the average torque in blue, and I mean we can see that it's bouncing around like ten milli newton meters. So mm -hmm. you know this is more dramatic is than the torque ripple, but that's that's pretty significant. I mean that's that's slotting effects, mm -hmm. that's magnets interacting with the slots. But you can directly line that up with with the current, uh, which I think is really freaking sweet. And and we can play it back. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we can watch that as, as like a playback of live. So, you know, we, we can see. Uh, so that current is messed up because that's interacting with the back end math and all the stuff that's going Yeah, well, and, and I mean, for, for this example, we're, we're making the torque intentionally awful, right? Okay. So we're actually injecting currents to, to make it okay. special types awful. Because here, all right, we're so not. That's nice, that's yeah. nice, sweet. And the current. average is, you know, is that Sweet. ever real? Does an inverter really ever do that? Uh, again, it depends on like the application. So mm -hmm. in, it, automotive machines have a pretty high inductance, and and yeah, that's a good filter. But we go to the aerospace machines, and to save weight, you cut back that back iron. Okay. And and now you have you know a situation that's a lot more, yeah, like uh, oh come on, bud, there like go. this. Oh wow. Where okay. those currents are gnarly, and that that torque is. Swinging, and I mean that—that that makes the machine vibrate. Uh, that will couple the structures, um, noise and vibration, obviously, and inefficiency. I mean, this yeah. isn't necessarily great for the machine. Well, one assumes that vibration is not good for reliability, yeah. right? But then, then we take—you know—all right, let's let's look at the acquisition side. So, oh, wow. like, if we if we go to our cycle detect, and again, this is all recorded oh. data. Application, so so you're getting—you know—you're trying to put in a, a nice sinusoidal current, mm -hmm. but because of the the design yeah. of the motor, you just getting yeah. it's messing things up, right? Yeah. So, so, so this will create torque ripple. Yeah. Okay. So, and that torque ripple will create vibrations. Yeah. A vibration will impact passenger or cargo. Yeah. And it will impact reliability. Well, durability. Durability. Because uh, okay. when when you have that cogging torque in an aircraft or that mm -hmm. torque ripple, I mean, you you yeah. inject whirl flutter, which makes the propeller go like this. Come on. <laughs> nice thing. Okay. Uh, which, which is not an instantaneous mm -hmm. failure, but it's a long term fatigue. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things we can do for power, um, or, or RMS, is we can record really easily these sine waves that are all over the place. Yeah. You know, the cycle detects looking at zero crossing, so even when this is really bad, we track it super nicely. Cool. And, and, and again, back to the design team. This is back to the design team, back to the control team.